Welcome to the International Word Center. We are so glad you could join us today. So on behalf of Rick and Helen, that's my wife and I, we're so glad you could join us because we know that God has something good in store for you. So get your expectation up today as we explore the Word of God, study the Word of God together, amen, and just draw on the anointing of the Holy Spirit that He will speak to you today to give you instruction, correction, direction, understanding, strength, encouragement, whatever it is you need today. God has it. As I, when I was growing up as a kid, we lived near, not too far from a shopping center. We could, it was in walking distance, and it was called Wellston, and they had this song that used to come on the radio. What do you want to buy? What do you want to pay? Shop in Wellston or something to that effect. What I'm saying, that just comes to my mind before I started this broadcast today, and the thought is, what is it you need? What is it you want to do? God has it. He has the uh, strength you need. He has the empowerment you need. He has the wisdom. He, he's got everything you need, and he's willing to give it to you. If you believe that today, that is ground to stand up on and shout amen and hallelujah. Amen. The victory is mine. I'm more than an overcomer. Amen. I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. Before we get into today's teaching, I do want to take out a, a little time to offer up some thanksgiving to God, worship Him. So join with me. It's always appropriate to worship God, to, to tell Him how much you believe in Him, how much you trust Him, and how good He is. Amen. So just lift your hands with me today and just in your own words, if you don't have any, use mine. But just let's begin to worship God. Father, we praise you today in this hour, whatever hour it is, whatever continent someone's listening to this, we believe in you and we set our love on you. And we thank you, God, that you're our refuge and our fortress, that you're our God. And because of that, we can rejoice in all the good that you have for us. For us. We thank you for your love toward us. We thank you for salvation, God. We thank you for forgiveness of all of our sins. We thank you, God, that you are our protector. Calamities and disasters do not come near our dwelling because you are our God. Accidents don't overtake us. No evil befalls us. And we thank you for that, God. It's not because of our wit or our ingenuity or great uh, talents. It's because of you. And we give you all the praise, all the glory, and we thank you for it now. We thank you for health in our bodies, soundness in our minds. Thank you, Father God, for wisdom and favor and prosperity. We thank you, Father God, for ordering our steps so we're always in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right things. We thank you, Father, for salvation coming to all our household. We thank you, God, for pushing labors into the paths of our families and neighbors and church members, leading them into the way of righteousness, causing them to come to their senses and make you, Jesus, the Lord of their lives. God, we just want to say thank you because every good and perfect gift has come from you, the Father above. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Again, we just want to say thank you for those who have been supporting us with your prayers and with your finances. Something great and good is about to take place. Turn off the TV and the media. Amen. Not all, all news is bad, but most of it is nothing but an agenda influenced by the power of darkness. Amen. They don't, some of them don't know it. Some of them do. But I would say the majority of them don't realize they're under the sway, under the influence of the power of darkness. So pray for them. Pray for our president. Pray for those who are in leadership over your uh, states and over your city. Pray for those who are in the hospitals, in the, in the schools, in the police department. Pray, 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 pray. Ask God for his help. And God has promised the prayers of the righteous. Amen. Make available his power dynamic in its working. So we just want to say thank you for uh, blessing us with your time and prayer. And thank you for the blessings of giving and finances to further this righteous cause to build up the body of Christ that we can do the work of the ministry and also to promote the gifts of the uh, fivefold gifts of the ministry, the ap apostle, the pastor, the prophet, the evangelist, and the teacher, because those are the gifts that Jesus left us in men and women, gave them special endowments to help grow us up 
to maturity, where we readily respond to God, that we're doers of his word and not hearers only. So I just want to say thank you for your giving. And if you want to join in on the giving, just go to our website at iwordcenter.org, click on the donate button, or go to the bottom of the page and find the mailing address if you want to send a money order check or something of that sort. So let's get right into the teaching today, into the word today. But let me pray over you givers and pray for the message for today because I can't do it by myself and I'm not going to try to. Father, I just lift up to you all those who are faithful givers out there to the ministry, church members, as well as partners. And I pray today, God, that you would supernaturally move on their behalf and make it unmistakable that they know and others know that you are their helper when it comes to finances. Some, God, out there are needing a touch in their body or they need peace in their home. I'm asking God that you would honor them because they've honored you with the tithe. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that your power would be working working in their lives spiritually, mentally, physically, and financially, causing them to prosper in their souls and prosper in their bodies and prosper in their finances. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father God, we just lift up this time today that we are getting together uh, virtually over, over recordings, God, that you, God, wherever we are, God, in faith, you said you would come down and help us. We're asking for your help now. We come boldly before your throne of grace and ask for your mercies and grace today. Give me, God, the ability to teach and preach whatever you want to do, Holy Ghost, in such a way that is clear and concise and filled with your power, filled with your love, filled with your faith, God, that it stimulates our faith and causes us to trust in you with our whole hearts in Jesus' name. I pray also, Father God, that you would operate and in the lives of the hearers, God, that you would confirm your word with signs and wonders. Holy Spirit, as you will, let the gifts that you supply flow in Jesus' name to the glory of God and to the benefit of all. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Well, we're going to jump right into today's teaching. Amen. We're not going to do very much review. So if you haven't been with us for the last couple of weeks, Sundays, uh, go to the website at iwordcenter.church or go to the YouTube channel, Rick Washington, and catch up with us. There's been two installments on this series we've been teaching on as the Lord leads us called Application. Cut and dry, it's talking about applying the Word of God to your life, how to do it. When I first got born again, uh, people told me what I needed to do, what I didn't need to do, etc. But they didn't tell me how, how to apply the Word. How do I actually apply the Word of God to my life? Some things are simple and some things need a little explaining. And that's what I believe God is doing with us today. You can't just do it any kind of way. God has a certain way of doing things and you have to fit into his plan and not try to get him to fit into your plans. So stick with us today because we're going to look at another part of laying the foundation so that we can get into hopefully next week as the Lord leads of applying the word to your life in particular areas. Maybe you need healing. Maybe you need finances. Maybe you need resolution on something. Maybe you need wisdom. Maybe you need direction. Amen. Maybe you need just clarity and a reaffirming of who you are in Christ. Amen. There's a lot of apps in the Bible. There's a lot of apps that you need to get downloaded into your spirit so that you can put them to use. And that's the definition we've been using on application. It means to put to use or in scriptural terms, it means being a doer of the word of God and not a hearer only. Because as we study the word of God, we come to realize that it's only the doer of the word of God that gets blessed or gets empowered to walk the way God says you can walk, free from sin, to be empowered to where you can have power over and authority over the devil and over sickness and disease. Even though the apps are available, you've got to download them and put them to use. We have a lot of people that are unaware. They don't read the manual. They don't know what apps are available. They don't know what is available in the word of God to them. Amen. A lot of us don't do the word or put it together. Or I won't say a lot of us. There's some people that don't do the word of God because they don't download the apps. As we said earlier, they don't meditate on it. They don't get it into their spirit. They have mental assent or knowledge of it in their. They have intellectual 
uh, memory banks filled up with scriptures and things, but it doesn't get into their spirit. Or they reject the word. They hear about speaking in tongues, but they say, ah, that's not for me because somebody else said it wasn't. They didn't study the Bible for themselves and ask God, is this for me, for me today? If you do that, God will say yes, and you can hit the button and download the app and the Holy Spirit will come and fill you to the full and to the overflow. Another reason that we see people uh, through past times and even in my personal life that we don't do the word, apply the word of God to our lives in different areas is because of laziness, a lack of diligence. You must enjoy diligence to be a doer of the word of God. And these are just a few things we've already talked about. Uh, so I've got to go through these little bit of reviews to get to where we left off. But pride is another reason that we don't apply the word of God to our lives. In other words, like prayer, the word of God says there's an application of prayer that as a believer in Jesus Christ, in God Almighty, the creator of the universe, that we should be, we should be applying, men should always pray and not faint. That's something you must apply to your life. But a lot of times because of pride, we can do it ourselves. We don't need God until... You say, well, I guess we better pray. Oh, has it come to that? That should be the first thing you do about anything and everything in your life is download that app of prayer and put it to use. Somebody shout amen to that. Uh, one last thing we talked about, and these aren't all inclusive. These are just some top five things that God put on my heart to speak to us about is being unwise. In other words, you see the truth, you know the truth, but you just don't do the truth. Amen. That's being unwise. That's being foolish. And that brings us to our foundational scripture. So if you don't have your Bible, grab it now, look for it, get your pad of paper as God speak to you. You want to write these things down. When God gives you an understanding of something, you go, oh yeah, write that down. That shows you shows that you value the word of God. You value what God is speaking to you and you, and you want to put it to work. You want to put it make it a part of your life. But as we said, often you can't do what you don't remember. That's why it's good to take notes. I keep my phone near me nowadays instead of a pad of paper. And I just dictated my phone. I got a whole lot of different nuggets from God through the days and night. Uh, sometime I get them in the bed, getting ready to go to sleep. Sometime I get them while I'm shaving some, I, I work, I'll just speak it into it. And then I highlight them and email them to myself so I can keep them. What I'm expressing to God, I believe, God, that you're talking to me and I value what you say and I want to hold on to it. And a lot of times I go back to those little nuggets, those little thoughts that came to me that I know came from God. And they're the very answers I've been praying for and asking about uh and, and, you know, it's, it's there, it's right in front of you. You got the answers or something is what I'm trying to say, or something that I need for the future that God gives me in advance. But our foundational, foundational scripture, I'm going to slow down. I'm just trying to get through this review a little bit. So go back and listen to last week, because I'm not covering everything that we covered last week or the week before on application, being a doer of the word of God. Uh, Luke six, beginning at verse 46. This is our foundational scripture for this teaching, this series on application. It says, what good does it, this is out of the TPT translation. It says, what good does it do for you to say, I am your Lord and master, if what I teach you is not put into practice? Verse 47, let me describe the one who truly follows me and does what I say. He is like a man who chooses the right place to build a house and then lays a deep, secure foundation. When the storms and floods rage against that house, it continues to stand strong, unshaken through the tempest, for it has been wisely built on the right foundation. And in verse 49, Luke chapter 6, 49, it says, But the one who has heard my teaching and does not obey it it's like a man who builds a house without laying any foundation whatsoever. When the storms and floods rage against that house, it will immediately collapse and become a total loss. Which of these two builders will you be? Well, let's get into the word today on this subject. Keep this thought in mind as we go through the rest of the teaching today. Through my Christian life, uh, different battles I've seen people go through, whether it be marital, relationship, or physical, or financial, 
The one thing that separates the person that receives what they need from God, he's not a withholder, he's a rewarder, it's not God's problem, between the person that does receive whatever it is we find in the Word of God that God says he will do is application, execution, doing what God says to do in the way he says to do it. Now, God is full of grace and he's full of mercy and he's long suffering and he helps us a lot. But God wants us to grow up and be mature in the things of God. He wants to trust us, trust us. He wants to trust us with true riches. He wants us to represent him in the earth like Jesus did. But he's looking for men and women and children that will grow up in the things of God so that he can go to you and give you responsibility knowing that you will apply or do the things he says to do. So this series I believe God has given us to teach on application is to help us to understand things we need to do to be a doer of the word or be a better doer of the word. Amen. And we've been laying foundation these first three, uh, this being the third upload, third part. Amen. We're laying foundation so that you can build upon it so you can go forth from here and go on to maturity and be a doer of the word of God and walk in all that God says you can walk in. Do all that God has says you can that God has said you can do. Receive all God has promised you uh, through the blood of Jesus and his death and resurrection and be who God has called you to be. So we've been talking about how to apply the word of God to your life. But before we get into some of the particulars of applying the word of God to your life, to walk in a long life, to walk in health, to walk in prosperity, to walk in wisdom, to walk in peace, to walk in joy, etc. There are some crucial attributes that by faith and by God's help, his mercy and his grace, you need to cultivate so that these things that you begin to Here's here's the picture I want you to get. God gives us seed. Everything He has promised us is in seed form. But for in in order for us to receive it or extract it, it has to be put into the right environment, nurtured, cultured, and it produces on its own like a natural seed. But if you don't have good soil or the right environment, you won't produce the results God wants you to have. If you go look, read the sower of the seed of the parable, Mark 4, it's found in the gospel and also in Luke. It says that some produce 30, some 60, some 100. I submit to you, we get to choose on what kind of produce or results we get, whether it be 30, 60, 100, or none. Some of the... Uh, parts of that parable, it talked about the word of God was sown into rocky soil or a stony soil or on the path, and it didn't produce anything. You don't want to be either one of those, but we're talking to those who want some, want to get results and want to get 30, 60, 100. I say 100 for 100 times as much coming back to you. And in Mark 4 and 24 in the Amplified, it says, according to the measure of Thought and study you give to the truth will determine how much virtue or power comes back to you. So to get all the return on putting God's word to use, applying it to your life, being a doer of his word and not a hearer only, building on a good, strong foundation, you got to have a good foundation in order to build a good, strong building. Are you listening to me this morning? So we talked about one of those attributes or characteristics or uh, aspects that need to be in your soil. Now, when I'm talking about soil, I'm using it as a, a parable of your spirit, of your heart. Uh, one of the things you've got to have a healthy fear of God. Now, when we talk about a healthy fear of God, we're not talking about afraid that God's going to lower the hammer on you. He's going to hurt you. He's going to he's a cruel, mean, bam, you know, and cause disease to get on you. No, 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 no. God's a good God. He's he's more perfect than you. And you being imperfect parents, you would never try, if you're a good parent, you would never try to train or correct or teach your child by sicking a rabbit 
pit bull on them. No, no, no. God has nothing to do with putting calamities and disasters on you, his children. He has nothing to do with putting disease or sickness on you. That is all from the devil. If it's good, it's God. If it's bad, it's the devil. That, is, that settles it, all right? But what we're talking about here is that God wants you to have it, but you've got to get into a place that you don't treat him uh, lightly. You got to see that he is. Whatever he says, it, it goes. Whatever a man sows, that's what you're going to reap. And only that. If you sow to your spirit, you'll reap, you'll reap good stuff, life and peace. If you sow to your natural man, your flesh apart from God, you're going to re reap corruption and decay and death. The spiritual mind is life and peace. The carnal mind, the, thing, the type of mind or mentality that are, that are set just on physical and natural stuff and, and things like that is, is death. Are you listening to me? You've got to understand that there's a, a good and kind part of God, but there's a severity part of God. And we, we used electricity last week to compare what we talk about when we say a healthy fear. You must cultivate, and you have to choose to do this, you must cultivate to develop a strong, healthy fear of God. Electricity will bless you. It will do a lot of good for you. Uh, nowadays, it'll run a car. Electricity will turn lights on when it's dark. It will cook your food and keep your food from spoiling in the refrigerator. Uh, electricity will run your power drill. Are you listening to me? But if you don't handle it properly and touch two ends of a live wire, it will cause problems. What I'm submitting to you today, you need to understand that God is God and what he says he is going to do. And one day there's going to be judgment of sin. Uh, amen. So we need to live before God with a healthy fear of God. Jesus put it this way. It's in Matthew 10 and 28. He says, don't be in fear of those who can kill only the body, but not your soul. Fear only God who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. When you have a healthy fear of God, when you have a, a right respect, a high respect for God, you'll handle your relationship with him properly and it'll motivate you to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Amen. I remember, uh, I think it's uh, E.V. Hill uh, many times, many years ago, I heard him on uh, TV and somebody asked him, you know, why is it that you get saved? And he simply said, I didn't want to go to hell. That's a healthy fear of God. I don't want to go to hell. Now, it shouldn't be the only motivating factor, but it should be a part of your makeup in your heart that you have great, great respect for God, that you fear him and do not want to sin against him. You fear him and you don't want to enter into be out of fellowship with him because you know he's a consuming fire and what he says is going to come to pass for good or for judgment. Are you listening to me for a reward? are for punishment. It's going to come to pass. There is a heaven. There is a hell. Hell was not made for mankind. It was made for the devil and all his cohorts. Amen. And, but if you choose to live in sin and practice it and not repent, you will be judged right along with it. And for a believer, we're going to be judged for every deed we do in our bodies for good or for bad. And we're going to be judged. You may still go to heaven, but you're still going to be judged. I don't know about you, but for me and my household, we want to be, we're going to stand before God and we want to stand before him and hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. So you need to cultivate a healthy fear of God. We want to get into a second attribute today that with the help of God, through his mercy and his, and his grace, you need to make sure you have a strong foundation of not only a healthy fear of God, but also a love for God. Somebody shout amen. Love is a choice. Uh, you say, yeah, I love God. Well, don't you analyze yourself to see if you have a love of God truly in your heart. The Bible says the word of God will analyze you. It can discern between it's sharper than any two-edged sword, and it can discern between the soul and the and the spirit, and between the bone and and the you know you follow what I'm saying. It's it can it will analyze your heart. So we need to look at the Word of God. Look in the look into the mirror 
of the perfect law of liberty and see what reflection we see is it in us. Let's look at the word of God today and talk about this attribute. If you want to be a doer of the word of God, if you want to apply the word of God to your life effectively, you must have this characteristic, this attribute in your spirit, a strong foundation of it so we can build on it and our house won't be shaken when things in life come against us, when the devil comes against us, amen, we can stand and push him back, amen, and win every battle. Uh, an example of what I'm talking about, the children of Israel was God's chosen nation that he wanted to use to, to speak to mankind through. Amen. He chose Abraham and then that's where the Jewish uh, Israelites came from. But God ex revealed himself in mighty ways to the Israelites, especially in the great coming out of Egypt, the, the Exodus, if you will. And he, he showed how powerful he was. He split Red Seas. He, he Red Sea. <laughs> he rained down food from heaven, manna. Amen. He uh, opened up a rock and poured water out. He sent uh, quail into the camp. He led them by a pillar of uh, fire at night and a cloud by the day. Are you listening to me? He just manifested himself greatly. When they went in to take the, the, the promised land, he knocked down walls. He did great and mighty things. But he constantly would have to say to more so of the children of Israel in the desert. And even after they came into the promised land, the, a lot of them began to leave God and love God other things, put other things before him. The children in, in Israel and in, in the desert, they didn't really love God. They chose to love something else. Mostly themselves are just the things that God could do for them. Uh, so we don't want to be in that category. We want to cultivate a strong love for God. Say this with me. I am a doer of the word of God. I do have a great reverential fear of God. I do love the Lord God with all my heart and all my might. Amen. Because in James 4 and 3, it tells us that sometime you can ask. Let me just read it. James 4 and 3 uh, it says, and if you ask, you won't receive it for you're asking with corrupt motives seeking only to fulfill your own selfish desires. I'm, I'm developing something here so you can see and let the word of God examine you today and me to make sure we have a love for God. What motivates you to do what you do? Is it a love for God? Well, let's keep reading and see what the Holy Spirit tells us today. Puts his finger. If the Holy Spirit puts his finger on something in your spirit, in you today that you recognize does not line up with God's ways of doing and being right. If you see that your motivation has not been holy or right because you love God, ask God to forgive you, have a change of mind for the good, change the way you think, you believe, and your actions, and God will help you. In John 6 and 26, Jesus answered them, uh, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, you have been searching for me, not because you saw the miracles and signs, but because you were fed with loaves and were filled and satisfied. Now, the backdrop of this story, the multitudes was following Jesus and he did the miracles of uh, the multiplying of the few fish and the bread and fed, uh, you know, 4,000, 5,000 people. And Jesus called them out and they was looking for him when he departed and his disciples in this particular passage in the book of John, the sixth chapter. And when they found him, they was calling in with all this reverential stuff like, Rabbi, Rabbi, we found you. We didn't know you were here kind of thing. And Jesus called them out. He read their mail, so to speak, and said, no, you, you're not following me because you really want to be taught the things of God. You're following me for the bread, for the food, amen, for the provision. And then Jesus went on down and he began to say, say to them in the sixth chapter, 54th verse, he said, he who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up from the dead on that last day. A lot of people didn't like that saying. And they said, that's too hard for us. We're not sticking around. We're not going to eat your flesh, man. Now, what he was talking about, believing on him, that he brought, he, he died. He gave his life, poured out his blood and gave his body broken on the cross 
for our salvation. You believe on that and eat it in a spiritual sense. But the people that were following him for the wrong reasons cut out. Almost everybody left except the disciples. And then Jesus even asked them, will you leave us too? And I forget which one it was. Peter spoke up and said, you have the words of life. Where are we going to go? Amen. So let's talk about first thing first. And we're still talking about application, but we're talking about laying a good, strong foundation in our hearts to build upon so that when we, when we begin to apply the word of God, amen, uh, to our lives, we're doing it in such a way that what we're building on will stand for eternity. In Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the sixth verse, first things first, in order for you to do any of these things we're talking about, to fear God, to love God, amen, to be a doer of his word, it's absolutely must that you have to believe he exists. For Hebrews 11 and six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him, capital H. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. In the TPT translation, the same verse, Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, and without faith living within us, it would be impossible to please God. For we come to God in faith, knowing that he is real and that he rewards the faith of those who give all their passion and strength into seeking him. When you believe in God and see him or perceive him as he has revealed himself, it will put you in the right position to receive from him as well as obey him. When you perceive God, the invisible God, of how he really is, the almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, not just believing God exists, but believing God is real the way he says he is, the creator of heaven and earth, the all-knowing God, the all-powerful God, the God that raises the dead, the God that heals the lame, the God that gives eternal life, the God that sins, that punishes the sinner and the evildoer, unwilling to repent and not believe on Jesus as their substitution for their sins, that they are put and cast into everlasting punishment. I'm talking about believing the God of the Bible the way he says he is. Now you are in position to fear him and love him. Amen. It will cause you to respond to God in the right way. Amen. But you got to do this by faith. And how does faith come? Romans 10, 17 tells us we get faith by hearing what God has said, an anointed word, an inspired word from God. When we hear what God has said, we have to choose to accept it as true. Believe it. Amen. We taught a series on believe. You need to go back and listen to that so you can understand what it means to really have faith and live by faith. It's very simple. It just means when you hear what God has said, you simply accept it as true. No compromise. Amen. When you get these, some of these, and these are only two we're touching on this, these attributes or, or characteristics of your heart of fearing God and loving him. These are two chief attributes of your heart that will and have to be present for you to consistently apply God's word to your life. They, ha they are the great motivators of the heart to be a doer of God's word and not a hearer only. That's a great fear, having a, a healthy fear of God and having a great love for God. Because in John 4 and 23, turn there with me as we continue on here. Uh, John 4 and 23 in the Amplified says, A time will come, however indeed is already here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking just such people as these as his worshipers. In John 14 and 15, it says, if you really love me, you will keep, obey my commands, obey what I say. And in the TPT translation, it says, loving me empowers you to obey my commands. So for you to be a doer of God's word, to apply his word to your life application, you must be a lover of God. 
Because see, people, as we said earlier, people are motivated to do things for many reasons. In the natural, people are motivated to do things because they're ambitious. Uh, their ambition, they want to be successful. They want to achieve some height in whatever career or profession or whatever it may be. They do it. Some people are motivated for money. Some people are simply motivated because they like pleasing people. They like for people to like them. They want to be popular. Amen. But when it comes to spiritual things or living the way God wants you to live, living by his word as a believer, our motivation or our motivating factors have to be a love for God. One of them. We talked about the fear of God last week, but the love of God has to be in our lives. When we choose to fear and love God, it will, come on, say it will motivate you to be a wise builder, a doer of the word of God, to make use of God's word, to apply God's word to your life. When you have a great respect, a healthy fear of God and a love for God, amen, it will motivate you to apply God's word to your life. I submit to you, some of us skip that step of laying a foundation of a fear of God and a love for God. Amen. Getting to know him from this point of view, that he truly exists, that he is almighty of God. I know we talk about grace, 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 and mercy, mercy, mercy. God pours it out profusely. But there is a point in time as a believer, we have to grow into maturity and recognize that we need to walk before God and worship him, walk with love him and have a great respect for him. There's a certain way God has to be handled. You can't enter into his presence. You can't live your life before him any kind of way. You have to live it according to the way he says we ought to live it. Amen. Or there's consequences. Amen. But we won't get back into last week's teachings. Go listen to it or where we talked extensively on what the fear, a healthy fear of God is. But now, good news. To develop these things in your life, you don't have to do them on your own. God gives grace. God gives mercy. All you got to do, ask for it. You first of all got to have faith for it. And in Hebrews, I, I believe it's, uh, I didn't look this one up before we got into the teaching, but in the first, I uh, believe chapter three or chapter four, 416 maybe, uh, where it says, you know, come boldly before the throne of God that you may obtain mercy and find grace just when you and others need it. That's amplified. Now, mercy is God giving you the good things you don't deserve and you're not getting the consequences that you should get, the negative consequences. Grace is God's willingness to give you his ability to do what it is he told you to do. So in order for you to develop these things we're talking about in your innermost being, God will help you. But he requires on our part to receive it and you receive it by faith. And how does faith come? By hearing what God has to say. So let me give you a few things God has said where he will help you develop a robust, a strong love for him. Go to Philippians 2, verse 12 and 13. These is, this is one of my go-to scriptures, amen. Uh, through my uh, Christian walk that this one and a few other ones, but this is one I go to a lot when I saw it. It just made my heart glad. And this is the good news that you're not in this on your own. God is on your side and he's given you everything you need. God is on your side and he has supplied everything you need to do what he said to do and to be what he's called you to be, even to be a lover of him. Amen. In Jesus name, that is good news. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me read it. Verse 12, Philippians 2 and 12. It says, therefore, my dear ones, say that's me, as you have always obeyed my suggestions. So now, not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I am absent. Work out, cultivate, carry out to the goal and full and complete. This is something we have to do. Like a farmer has to cultivate the ground. He doesn't make the seed grow, but he has to cultivate the ground. And that's what the Lord is saying to us today. Our part is to cultivate our heart, but he gives you what you need to do it with. He gives you the right tools. He gives you everything you need to cultivate your heart to be a lover of him. Reading right along, it says, uh, cultivate, carry out to the goal and fully complete your own salvation with reverence and trembling, self-distrust with serious caution, tenderness of, con ca tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptation, 
timidly shrieking, shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ. That's talking about that fear of God. But in verse 13, it goes on and says, not in your own strength. Say, I like to amplify it in this particular verse. Say it this way, not in your your own strength. Let's say it again. Not in my own strength. Not in my own strength. Say, whew, I'm glad of that because uh, sometimes my strength, you know, physically, naturally, I need God's help. I need God's grace. It goes on to say, not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing, creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. One of my confessions, and, and if you take this scripture and kind of paraphrase it to your own thinking and personality, is that God's given me right desires and he's given me the ability to do them. Hallelujah. God has given me how to think and how to love, how to forgive. He's working it in me by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Another scripture that'll help you understand that this love that you've got to cultivate in your spirit with the help of God so that you can set your love on God, that your motivation for being a doer of his word is your love for God. Uh, Joseph put it this way when he was in Potiphar's house and Potiphar's wife wanted him to commit sin. And he said, how can I do this wicked, this evil thing before God? How can I sin him before him? David said, I hid your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. In other words, that the love for God, if when you have a strong, active love for God, it will motivate you to do the word of God. Oh, glory. Instead of doing it out of some religious duty or doing it because you got to please somebody or doing it because somebody else told you to, but it's not your whole heart is not in it. Doing it be before the pastor or the congregation. You know what I'm talking about. Doing it with the wrong motivation is short lived. But when you're doing it for God because you love him, it'll take you right on out of here into eternity. Amen. When Jesus returns or whatever the case may be. In Romans 5 and 5, here's a motivator for you to understand a motivation of for you for love of God. And and Romans 5 and 5, in Romans 5 and 5, God's love for you will help you to have love for him. Hallelujah, that's so good. Because it says this, and this hope is not disappointing. What hope? Our hope in Jesus Christ. This hope is not disappointing fantasy because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Now that's the TPT translation. Uh, some other translation says the love of God is shared abroad in our heart. In other words, we experience how much God loves us when we open up our lives to him and he begins to pour it out on us. And if you read that uh, chapter of uh, Romans chapter five, it gets into more details of what, what this one scripture is expressing and that while we were yet sinners, not even thinking about God, Jesus died for us. God had us on his mind in, when we were dead in our sins. Oh, you need to meditate on that. You need to focus on that. Get a full heart of that, how much God loves you. And in 1 John 4, 19, this is what will take place in your heart, in your spirit, that we love him. We love God because he first loved us. When you begin to uh, uh, begin to cultivate and, and uh, strengthen and empower your love for God, it'll motivate you to live right. It'll motivate, mo motivate you to talk right. It'll motivate you to pray. It, you're, you're applying the word of God to your life will now be driven by your love for God and it's needed. Amen. In Galatians 5 and 22, and we're getting ready to come to a close, so stick with us, amen, because we want to pray with you today. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, amen, we want to lead you into a prayer, talk to God, that you can get right with God, amen, so that you can make eternity with God your home. In Galatians 5 and 22, it says, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence, the Holy Spirit, accomplishes within us is love. Uh, we could go into the other ones, but we're focusing in on this one right now. Love, when you yield to the Holy Spirit and let him work in you, amen, you yield your faculties and your will to him, he will work in you this God kind of love, this love for God. 
And love is a choice. Love is choosing to do those things that will please somebody else, not yourself, but to please somebody else first. And what pleases God is to believe in him, to have faith in him. What pleases God? To have faith and obey him. Hallelujah. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments, uh, Jesus said. If you love God, you'll keep his commandments. Amen. So yield to the Holy Spirit. You say, how do you yield to the Holy Spirit? One excellent way is to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. Speak in that language that he gives you to speak. When you're yielding to him, he's working things into your spirit. Another way is to obey him. When you get this prompting or this nudging or urging to do something loving and kind to someone or for someone, act on it. And when you act on it, it just begins to produce that love in your spirit, the kind of love that God is needing for you, us to live in and walk in, the love for him and the love for others. As we said in Mark uh, 12 and 20, 12 and 30, it says, you are to love, this is TPT again, you are to love the Lord Yahweh, your God, with every passion of your heart, with all the energy of your being, with every thought that is within you and with all your strength, this is the great and supreme commandment. We need to be doers of the word. We need to begin to apply the word of God to our lives. But when we lack a love for God to do the things that please him, amen, it's not going to be true worship. It's going to be religion. Amen. We, we, or you'll do things for the wrong reason because the pastor asked you to do. Now, I'm not saying you don't do things because the pastor asks you to, but your ultimate motivation, the Bible says, do these things as unto God and not unto men. Your love wanting to please God with all your heart. Amen. When you get that cultivated and worked in your spirit with the help of the Holy Ghost and yielding, meditating on the word of God, God will cause you then to rise up and you will be ready to go on to maturity. You'll be able to be trusted with the true riches and you'll begin to apply the word of God in such a way that the kingdom of God will be advanced through your life. And many, many, many thanksgiving will go up to God for all the good things that are flowing through you and flowing through me because we are accurate representatives in the earth of God, just like Jesus. We can't be greater than Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. He's the only begotten son of God. He's the savior of the world. But Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you got to be like me. You, amen. You got to be like me. You got to live the way I live. You got to pick up your cross, not dying for people, but self-denial. Amen. Doing the things that God says to do. But I submit to you the reason sometimes believers falter in being a doer of God's word, applying God's word to their lives in any area is because we have not laid the foundation of a strong and robust love for God. Amen. Your reason for doing something. Get into the word of God this week. Let the Holy Spirit help you and lead you. Begin to read the scriptures in this light. What is God asking of me to do? Amen. That's what I want to do. Get into the scriptures and yield to the Holy Spirit as we said before. Pray in the Spirit. Amen. Let him act on those things he prompts you to do so that God can create in you a strong love for him. That your motivation for the things you do is because you want to please him. Amen. Well, that's all we're going to do for today. I know you got something out of that. Amen. Go back and listen to these teachings over and over and over. Read the scriptures over and over. God will reveal more to you than uh, a man can. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. And I know he's been talking to us today. I've even been blessed, even though I'm the one doing the teaching. I'm hearing some things for the first time when I'm talking to you. So take what you've learned today. Put it to practice. Get before God and ask him to help you to walk in a strong love for him, walk in a great reverence, uh, uh, a healthy fear of him. And when you put these two things into your spirit in a, uh, a strong and robust way, being a doer of his word, the things we're going to begin to talk about next week, applying his word to your life, these things will motivate you and it won't be Ah, I don't really feel like it. No, you'll love to do it. It'll be your greatest joy. You, oh, come on. You'll love to be a doer of the word of God and not a hearer only. Amen. So before we go, like I said, let's pray for you today. You've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Let me preach the gospel to you first so you can have faith for it. Jesus came because mankind was in a state separated from God. Sin separates you from God. 
doing those things that are outside of his ways of doing and being right separate you from God. Most of us, all of us know when we're doing wrong. Now you can push it aside because society says it's okay now, but deep down on the inside at the onset of whatever you're doing, thinking or saying, you know when it's wrong. God convinces mankind of right and wrong. But I tell you today, in order for you to have fellowship with God now and forever, you need to be made righteous, not just forgiven, but made righteous. And the only way you can be forgiven of all your sins and made righteous is the Bible teaches us in Romans 10 that you've got to believe on Jesus as the Messiah, as the anointed one, the one that was given the power and the might and the strength to take your place and my place and take the punishment and the penalty for all our sins. If you believe that God has put all the world's sin and its punishment on Jesus and he died in your place, but good news, God raised him from the dead. If you believe that in your heart and admit it, confess it, amen. If you admit it and confess it with your mouth, God has said, when you do that, it gives me the right and the permission to forgive you of all your sins and turn you into a righteous man or woman. If that's you today, come on, pray with us today, right now. Just repeat this after me. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I believe that Jesus died in my place and paid the price for all my sins and you raised him from the dead. I believe and take you at your word that I'm forgiven and you're working in me right now, creating me into a new creation, a righteous man, a righteous woman, forgiven and made right with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you need one more thing. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. God said in Luke 11 chapter, if you ask for the Holy Spirit, he'll give them to you. He's a good God. If, he asks, if you ask for bread, he doesn't give you a rock. If you ask for a fish, he doesn't give you a snake. Amen? So ask with me now to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You say, what is that? It's a promise from the Father. Jesus said, it's better that I go because if I go, the Holy Spirit will come and he'll not just be with you, but he'll be in you. So pray, ask God now, say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want everything that you have for me. Baptize me now, fill me with the Holy Spirit in Jesus name, amen. Now take some time and begin to worship God and give him thanks for saving you, forgiving you, cleansing you and filling you with his spirit. And what's gonna take place in your life God will begin, will begin to help you and show you things to come. He'll reveal to you what the Bible means. He'll teach you, amen. He'll help you to pray. And he'll also give you a supernatural ability to pray and talk in a language you haven't learned. It's called tongues. Get in the Bible. Search it out for yourself. Get faith for it yourself. But amen. The word of God says when we pray in the spirit, when we speak in tongues, when we speak in that language inspired by the Holy Spirit, we're not talking to men, but we're talking to God and we're praying and glorifying God in a language from the Holy Spirit. So it's perfect and it's right and it produces results in our lives and others. We thank you again for joining us today for another episode of the International Word Center. So come back and join us again anytime. But remember this, who the sun sets free is free indeed. So enjoy your freedom in God, but don't use it as a cloak of uh, doing your own thing, but use it as a freedom to populate heaven and plunder hell and bring glory to God. Let others know how real he is and how powerful he is through your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.